Hello everyone and welcome back to another TCC video. You guys liked the last two videos I put out. I know you did because you watched most of it. So if you want to watch this whole video but you want to watch it a little faster, don't forget that YouTube allows you to watch at a faster speed. This will be another longer video. So in this video I want to talk about wealth development, especially because I feel that younger people today probably feel very financially insecure. You've got the government is printing a bunch of money. Uh, politics are extremely divided right now. Uh, it doesn't seem so certain that America has such a strong position in the world as it used to have. Some of you guys might not be from America. I'm, I'm American, obviously. And uh, so, yeah, there's probably a lot of anxiety around wealth creation. Also, there's a lot of interest in it. And uh, I myself am very interested in it, so I'm constantly reading and learning. Uh, when I was younger, I was born into a large family. It was 11 kids with the same mom and dad, and we were poor all the time. And I just could never have what I wanted. Maybe that's one of the reasons why I'm so interested in wealth development, because I watched my parents struggle, and I, I, don't, I didn't want to struggle like them. But also, there was a lot of things I missed out on in my childhood, because my parents just couldn't afford it. So most of my childhood was just working, and as an adult, I want to know that my kids won't have to live that way, and that maybe Maybe I'll be, you know, sipping margaritas on a cruise in the ocean when I'm a little bit older and done working. So I want to give you guys some practical advice, but also just some sort of like, maybe like some psychological advice. Is, is psychological advice practical? I think it is a little bit to a degree. What does practical advice even mean, right? Um, but yeah, let's start out. I'll talk a little bit about myself. So when I was younger, I was homeschooled. And what that really meant was I didn't learn anything because my parents didn't homeschool me very well at all. Uh, my education was almost, my parents would toss a book. Well, they taught me how to read. My mom did. And then she would toss some math books at me and I wouldn't work on them because I was a kid. And kids don't, most kids don't choose to do math, right? So like you get a book and you go, I'm going to go play video games instead. I'm not doing this. And she didn't really stop us or force us to do school. She couldn't. There were too many kids. Eventually, my dad develops a small business because he needs to because our, our financial needs are that bad. <laughs> and um, so he's working full time and running a small business. He was working like 60, 70 hours a week easily. He worked uh, on the weekends as well, his small business. He always worked the weekends. So I watched him work a tremendous amount to provide for us all. And uh, that was actually a great learning experience all by itself. So step number one, have a dad. No, I'm just teasing you guys. But uh, uh, what he would do is he would go out of town, and then I was in charge of the small business. I was one of his employees. My older sister also worked, but she eventually got a job at, like, I think it was a Home Depot at the time. And so she only worked for him for a while, but I actually worked for him for years. I think I worked four to five years in his small business. And he would leave me in charge of it when he went out of town, and I was just expected to do a lot of the work. And I learned all kinds of concepts that you really only learn – uh, from running a small business, and I learned it at such a young age. And the funny thing is, you know, I wasn't learning about William Shakespeare. I wasn't learning about uh, critical race theory, right? They're teaching that in school. It's pretty controversial, I guess. And I wasn't learning about, you know, biology or anything like that. People, you might say biology is pretty important. Uh, I wasn't learning any of that stuff, but I was learning how to buy and how to sell which actually ends up being a really dramatically powerful skill later in life. So I, I eventually, I leave home around the age of 17 and 18 and get my own place and I get my first job at Target and I find out I'm a great worker. And the reason why I'm a great worker is just because I kind of wake up in the morning like SpongeBob. You guys watch SpongeBob, obviously. Uh, well, actually, now SpongeBob's getting kind of older. But, you know, he wakes up, he's real excited to go work at the Krusty Krabs. He's got the right attitude. So that would probably be my first tip for you guys is don't have a negative attitude. Don't have an attitude where you're sort of like the victim of the system or whatever you want to say. Maybe it's even true. Maybe this. Maybe the odds are stacked against you. Maybe you're a victim of the system, whatever. But the problem is if you fall into a victimhood mentality and you have a low, bad attitude, you're never going to just act. You know, you know, Nike's slogan, do it or just do it or whatever their slogan is. You need to have a, a bright and energetic an, uh, attitude so that you wake up and you just get a lot done. You know what I mean? So you got to have the right attitude if you're ever going to be wealthy. And I would say some other parts of that is you need to have a, a, a goal in mind, like say, I need $5 million to retire or $6 million, I don't know. I think when I was younger, it was a smaller amount, but the value of money is inflating, right? Uh, because the government keeps printing it and they keep going deeper into debt, and the price of goods keep going up, so healthcare is getting more expensive. So when I was younger... Uh, I didn't really have any of that, but eventually when I was about 18, I started reading all kinds of books on wealth development, and man, that really sparked my passion in wealth development. Wealth development is interesting. If everyone around you was wealthy, no one would need socialism. If everyone around you uh, just set some of their money aside for retirement, they would need help 
uh, in their old age. Now, you can't expect everyone to do that, but I'm just saying. We like to talk about utopias where there's socialism for everyone, but nobody talks about utopias where everyone just is a little more careful with their money and they plan a little better, and then they just don't need your money. So nobody really talks about that, and that's the utopia that I think about. I think about a utopia where everyone is prosperous and wealthy and they have enough to take care of themselves because they made the right choices in life. But most of all, they were really productive in life, and they created a lot of innovative things and, uh, you know, uh, Money is not a very good measure of wealth. It's what you have in your life that the, that's a good measure of wealth, you know? So people complain about wages not going up over time, buying power not going up over time. But think about it. You got the Xbox, you got TikTok, you got cell phones, you've got fancier tasting foods. You know, the, the quality of the things in our life have actually improved dramatically, even if you're not finding out that you have $2 million in your bank account. So the quality of your life has gone up compared to the quality of like even just two generations ago. You know, your grandparents didn't have the internet. <laughs> you know, how are you going to live without the internet? Uh, that's worse than, uh, you know, that's like going to jail or something, not having internet. It's almost unimaginable today to not have the internet. How am I going to order DoorDash? <laughs> so the quality of your life has gone up from all of these innovations. And your goal, you know, wake up bright and early. You get a goal to, to retire on $5 million, have a nice home and a place that you want to live, which is something you got to ask yourself, where do I want to live? Do I, do I want to live in a place that's overtaxed and expensive? Or do I want to live in a place that's uh, a lot of businesses are cropping up, housing is cheap, uh, you can still raise a family in a nice area that doesn't want to turn your kids into some sexual weird thing, you know. So you got to think about where you want to live, I think, is an important part of that as well. Uh, so yeah, the correct attitude, don't have a victim mentality and think about building prosperity and wealth and have a goal because what will happen with you over time in life, you trade, you trade your time for money. I'm doing it right now right? Uh, you trade your time for money and that becomes part of your routine. But the other part of your your daily routine needs to be wealth expansion. So you get your work done, you go to work for eight hours, you come home and you need to spend another six hours applying for better jobs and uh, strategizing. Where, what job should I get? Where should I live? You know, so that's strategizing and that's sort of like research and development. That's innovating you right? You can innovate a product. What about yourself? How do you innovate yourself? How do you make yourself better? You know, how do you invest more education into yourself? How do you expand the way you think about education? So people, when you talked about education, that just meant going to college. Nowadays, I think it means learning stuff really rapidly online for free. Because you can, you can go to college and spend like $2,000 on a William Shakespeare class. There's a lot, there's a line of, of colleges that would be happy to sell that to you. It's a ton of money, right? You could just go read the book for free. <laughs> the book exists. Just go read Shakespeare. Go read uh, the Cliff Notes and then watch some, uh, you know, go watch some breakdowns of it on YouTube for absolutely free. Right? We all have cell phones. We all have YouTube. So things are, times are changing. Anyways, that's the beginning of my practical advice is just to have the right attitude. When you're young, if you're doom and gloom and you're worried that the government is the reason that you're not wealthy, other people are the reason you're not wealthy, you're not wealthy because uh, somebody owes you something, socialism, blah, blah, blah. It's, it's just not going to work out for you because if you want to become wealthy, you have to believe that the actions you take today can change the outcome of your life. You have to believe that you can make choices that then lead to your wealth. And I strongly believe in that. And if you don't believe in that, you're essentially just waiting for somebody to take care of you. And I don't think life's gonna work out so well for you. If you really believe that you just need to wait for somebody else to take care of you, it's not gonna happen. Well, I mean, and somebody might take care of you. They'll give you, um, as Dave, and Ramsey, Dave Ramsey might put it, rice and beans. You know, that's what you'll get. You'll get the cheap stuff. Cause, but if you want to live wealthy with the boat on a lake house, you have to take control of your life, especially within your boundaries or control. Right, So I, I tend to think about what can I control. There are things you can't do much about. The greater economy, guys in power, you can't tell them what to do. But there are certain things within your own life that you can wake up and you can actually work on. What are, what's your, what's your uh, boundaries that you have control over that you can stretch and improve on? Attitude. Number two, college. <laughs> so we're going to talk about college because college is one of the worst debts in your life, in my opinion. Maybe not the worst. You know, credit card debt, maybe. Credit card debt for a pair of sneakers or a car that you don't need. Actually, one of my worst 
experiences in life, my wife and I bought a used vehicle for like, it was like $3,000, but we actually ended up spending about $7,000 on it over time for repairs, and then it broke. <laughs> it broke, we didn't even get to sell it. It broke, it totaled, the engine broke. So that was one of my absolute lowest financial points was struggling with that vehicle. Uh, so vehicles are silly. College is not the worst debt. I, I'm very, if you've listened to my live streams, I'm very critical of our modern college uh, education system, maybe public education as well. Actually, the funny thing is, I was homeschooled. I mentioned that at the beginning of the video, and I said, I learned nothing, and that's true. I didn't even learn algebra, and yet I still graduated with a computer science degree, a bachelor of science. I, I point out bachelor of science because you could have gotten the bachelor of arts, and that's the easier computer science degree. That's the one where you have a lot less math, right? But I did the, the other one, the one with all the math in it. So I graduated with that, and I had virtually no high school. I had, I had almost no middle school either. I learned how to read and that was about it. My mom taught me how to read and how to do some math and then she was done. So with so very little education, I was still able to enter college and get my college degree. And looking back on that, it makes me question everything. Like how important is public school? How important is it for young men to sit around in a school where you're worried about how others perceive the way that you dress. Uh, you're worried about if you're gonna get to have, I don't know, sex with some girl because you're you know, a teenager and your hormones are raging and you're gonna get somebody pregnant by accident and a heartbreak. What are you gonna go to the prom and you know, all this stupid social stuff. You're worried about all that. You're probably not even learning too much in the school that actually applies to real life. You know what I mean? Have you ever gone to school and you ask yourself, why am I learning this? Did you ever like ask your teacher, do we need, do, will I ever use this in life? And the funny thing is, when I was younger, I would ask myself that question, but it felt like a facetious question. It felt like a question you would only ask if you're being, you know, kind of a, try, kind of trying to poke your teacher in the rib. I can tell you uh, with certainty today, you do not need that stuff. You definitely don't. If you go into a specific field of work, you just need the information from that field of work. Uh, you don't need to take creative writing. You never needed to learn how to spell. You never needed to learn cursive. And, and a lot of schools got rid of cursive and spelling. What else can we get rid of? Because we're spending an awful lot of money, public money, on public school. And we're spending an awful lot of time in school, too. You know, what if school was uh, sort of compressed down to a year early uh, for graduation? Well, you get a year of your life back, a year of your l young life back. That's when you have all of your energy. So when you go to public school, one of the questions I have is how, really how important is public school? Uh, because when you get out of school, the thing you really want is a college degree because you need the college degree in order to get a job or else nobody will hire you, right? Which actually, that's funny too, because there seems to be a labor shortage. So I wonder how many companies right now are just waving that. They're like, I don't care if you got a college degree, everyone's got a college degree. Just are you the right person? Do you have the right particular skills for this job? Are you profitable for me, the business, right? So, uh, but yeah, so college, I write this down as you need to change the way you think about it so that you, you determine that it's a tool for wealth building, okay? Don't think of college as this certain thing in your life that you can just go to and it will make you wealthy. That's not true. Wealth development is not a certainty in life. Uh, the only thing that builds wealth is when you innovate or produce. Going to college just suggests that you're smart enough that you're going to be productive or you're going to be innovative. But is college necessary is a good question. You might be able to sneak by with a two-year college, uh, community college degree or technical training and uh, or a license you know, following those two things. And I hear that a lot of guys are actually choosing that these days. And whenever they say that, they always talk about it like it's, oh, men are being left behind. Oh, men, girls are outperforming boys in school. Oh, you know, you hear a lot about, it's almost like people are happy to say that. Like, <laughs> oh, I'm so glad men are failing. But actually, when I hear that, I, I actually wonder if maybe men are being uh, really quite clever because they've realized how overpriced school is. You pull out these massive $70,000 debts, and they make you take all these prerequisites, uh, all of these uh, extra classes that you don't need. Like I had to take two philosophy courses. Why? Why did I have to take them? They apply to nothing. They apply to nothing. I, I took two courses in German language and I chose German language because it's just a great sounding language, Oktoberfest, Wiener schnitzels and all that stuff. But why did I have to take that? I didn't have to take it. It doesn't apply to computer science in, even a little bit. 
So I had to take these courses, these extra courses, to complete a four-year degree. And really, it was just the way for the uh, college to sort of keep their social sciences, or social, uh, is it called social sciences? Humani I think it was the humanitarian subjects or something like that. Keep those courses alive and pay these professors and make money off of you, the student. And you, the student, you receive all this government money. So the, the, you know, the schools are doing this. Ooh, let's pick up some of that government money with all these courses that they don't need, courses that are not an investment in the skills that they need to be productive and innovators. So college really irritates me because it's clearly overpriced. Everyone's got a college degree. But I also want to talk about some college education that I still find pretty valuable. Medicine, science, technology, and finance. You know, one of the funny things about life is when I was younger, my mom was always telling me that I ought to be a doctor or something like that. And who knows, maybe I would have been a great doctor. Uh, and I was interested in being a lawyer myself. And it's funny because now I do a lot of talking, so maybe I would have been a good lawyer. Um, but there, your, your parents are always telling you to go be a doctor or something like that. And who actually makes all the money in the world? Is it doctors? It's not. Is it lawyers? Not lawyers either. The people who make all the money in the world are the bankers, the bankers and the financiers, the guys in the stock markets make all the money. And then finally, the creator of new products, that would be like Elon Musk, uh, the Amazon guy, Jeff Bezos, Bill Gates, the people who made all the money were the innovators. And you don't have to be Jeff Bezos. You don't have to invent the next Amazon. But if you were even one one hundredth of the uh, level of success that he reached, you would be wealthy. So you should realize immediately that just going into these traditional jobs like doctor, uh, that doesn't mean you're gonna become wealthy over time. In fact, doctors really struggle because it's so competitive to get into the medicines, medical schools, and then those schools just rake you over the coals financially because they know you're gonna make good money as a doctor. So they know that they can request a lot of student debt from you. So you go into there, you're stuck in school for like eight years becoming a doctor, and then you go and you do your residency, and then finally you're old and you're having to sell like bad drugs to people so that you can pay off your student loan or, or plastic surgeries that people don't actually need. And, uh, but, but on the other hand, you got these financial guys, like the young Bitcoin guys who just buy some Bitcoin and voila, they've made a ton of money because, I don't know, uh, it was new. Bitcoin was innovative and new. And, and, and so not just new, but it was a subject of finance. Same with the Pokemon cards, actually. So like, what is this? Here's my Shining Fate, I'm sorry, my uh, Shining Charizard from, from what? Neo Destiny, and it says I bought it for like 5,000. It probably sells for like 10,000 now, maybe 15 if I'm lucky. So, you know, there are these guys going into new financial markets and doing way better than everyone stuck at their traditional job. And then suddenly you're scratching your head going, what am I doing over here? You know, you're watching these girls on TikTok and they do like dances or like they bob their head correctly and then they get millions of views. And you know, you just know that they're rolling in that ad revenue, right? So you start to look at yourself and you're like, what am I doing? What am I doing? I'm working this nine to five job. I'm a middle manager at Walmart and living paycheck to paycheck. I have no savings. And this guy's like doing a little dance on TikTok and then he gets to play around for the rest of the day, right? So what's really going on is the people in those fields like uh, investing in alternative investments, they've gotten into innovating on something and that's just where all the money goes all the time, right? It's, it's hard to make money in conservative things uh, unless maybe you're talking about something else like becoming a nuclear energy engineer or a oil engineer, right? Those are really great paying jobs too. And those are four year degree jobs. So you can go to school for four years, become an oil guy and go make lots of money because the whole world still runs off of oil. Or if you're more passionate about nuclear energy or maybe even renewable energy, I think there's probably plenty of money in renewable energy as well. So if you're gonna go to college, go to, go to college not for these things. Do not go to college for a four-year psychology degree. You guys know that girls actually hold two-thirds of the college debt, right? So I was talking earlier about how they almost say with glee that there's more women in college. Maybe it's like a, you know, like a feminist moment. Yeah, there's more girls in college. Yeah, the girls have all the college debt. And two-thirds is not all of it, though, so to be fair. But they go to school, and they pick up their four-year psychology degree, and they uh, promptly discover that there's nothing to do with it. You become a middle manager at Walmart. They go, oh, good, you've got your psychology degree. Welcome, you're a middle manager at Walmart. You're not going to become a doctor on a four-year psychology degree. 
Maybe if you go for, uh, if you become a medical doctor in psychiatry, but then you're going down that traditional route, I was just talking about it, and you come out making $300,000 a year, so you almost make as much as a small business owner. Almost, but not quite. And you're certainly not even close to a financier. Financiers make the real money. So you do all this work, you take on all this student debt, you're super educated, you know all the Shakespeare, and then you don't even make that good of money. Some guy running a small business is out earning you. You know. And the funny thing is, um, you know, you become a doctor earning three hundred, four hundred thousand dollars a year. The small business owner who's making that much or more, like maybe he's making a million dollars a year, he then gets to sell his business later. So he sells his business to, or his business gets acquired by a larger company in the same industry, who's just looking to get rid of their competition and. Now he's even wealthier because he can sell his business. Whereas with the doctor practice, maybe there, maybe there is some, uh, maybe you can do that with certain doctor practices. But I bet there's a lot where you really can't do that. Uh, the owner of the hospital can do that, and that person is the business owner. So once again, business and finance actually make you quite wealthy. Uh, whereas just being the engineer or just being the doctor, those are more like traditional jobs, and they don't quite make you as wealthy, even though they may look like they do. So college is just a tool for wealth development, uh, and I want to talk about the next subject that is really closely related to college, and I feel that this is really important for wealth development, and it's talked about a little bit, but it's not like your your dad wakes you up on a Saturday morning on your birthday and, and warns you about this. So I'm warning you about it because I'm your dad right now, even if you're older than me. And so my second tip, or maybe my third tip, if you counted the attitude as the first tip, my, my third tip is don't marry into debt. Oh, no, the subject of marriage. Yeah, so who you marry is really, really, really important, actually. I had somebody ask me in one of my TikToks recently, where do you get all the money to buy these Pokemon cards? I married a software engineer. My wife's a software engineer. She's a software engineer. She can pay off all the bills on her income and have plenty of money left over for herself. She can do whatever she wants. She's got money to go out if she wants to go out, but all the bills are paid. And so guess who doesn't have to pay the bills? Me. So I don't have any bills. You know, uh, well, actually, that's not 100% true. I helped pay for the uh, lake home, uh, but she puts quite a lot of money into the house, and so do I. So, uh, but the point is, I don't have to do as much because I don't rely, or she doesn't rely on me for an income. Now, listen carefully to what I'm saying here, because what I'm, I'm not saying you have to go find a software engineer girlfriend, but what I do want to say Excuse me. You know how I mentioned two thirds of the college debt is held by women and you got all these girls going in for like psychology. Well, they don't just go in for psychology. They go in for psychology. They go in for history. They go in for philosophy, interpretive dance. They go in for fine arts. They go in for all these uh, unprofitable degrees, degrees that are not a good return on interest. And then what they do is they get four years older so that's four years that they were not working. So this is funny. Let's say you had a girlfriend who was going off after that history degree, because let's be honest, history degrees, except for those guys who are going to teach history, they're really not that good of a choice. But they're going because it's easy, and they get into college, and they get to go to college parties, spring break, woo, right? So they get all that stuff, and they feel prestigious because they're in school. Well, then they walk out, and they have $70,000 of debt. Who's going to pay that debt? She went to school for history. You went to school for nuclear uh, science. You're paying the debt. The debt is yours now. And her best job is maybe high school teacher, which really does not pay much. If you're lucky, maybe professor, but I hear that professors aren't earning as much either these days. So she could become a professor, maybe a teacher at a high school, which pays very little. And, or she could just end up being... Um, a middle manager at Walmart, which probably ironically pays as much as the school teacher. So she is going to have that $70,000 debt on her shoulders and four years where she did not work a job and earn four years of money that she could have saved up for down payment on her home. And so, and the next problem you're going to do is you're going to marry her in this expensive wedding. You're going to spend $2,000 on a shiny rock. You're going to go on some honeymoon, even though you're young and you can't afford it. I skipped all those things. No wedding, we're married, but no wedding, no wedding dress, no ring, no honeymoon. We didn't do any of those things. You know what we did do? We bought a lake house. So we live out here in Lake of the Ozarks, one of the best lakes in the country. We have a dock where we can park our boat. We're gonna buy a boat pretty soon. We didn't, we didn't waste any of that. And, and the, one of the reasons you have to think about it this way is because when you're young, 
that $10,000 you wasted on the ring, the honeymoon, the uh, wedding itself, the wedding dress, that $10,000, that's your seed money. That's your money you use to get started. That's your money you use to get your investment started. So if you're wasting all that on these consumable goods in an industry that's designed to sort of wring the money out of you, you right? So you're making somebody wealthy, but you're not getting wealthy. So if you're doing that and you're marrying into debt, you're just done. You're poor. You know, uh, how are you going to compete with uh, somebody like me that did all the opposite of that? How are you going to compete with me? You can't. I'm always going to be ahead of you because I did. I, I was different with my choices. So uh, I woke up bright like SpongeBob and I made really good strategies and really good choices. And now our outcomes are showing up differently. You've got $70,000 of your wife debt. Now, and here's a worse part. So I'm, I'm, wor I'm warning you not to marry... Uh, into debt. And this is for girls as well. If you're watching and you're a girl, you should be thinking the same thing. So like you should be wondering, do I want my husband to buy all, or my uh, potential husband to buy me all this crap? Or do I want a lake house? Do I want to live where I want to live? But also, do you, do you really need your history degree or should you go into finance and try to become a financial advisor, which I hear women do quite well with jobs like fi uh, financial advisor. But not just that, Maybe school's not even the right choice for you. So this is something nobody talks about. Um, you know, you could just skip college. Everyone acts like you have to get a college degree. You do need a college degree for certain types of jobs. But there's jobs out there that probably pay 15 bucks, maybe 20 bucks, some sort of office job. If you're real competitive with searching for jobs, so pick up a baseline job. You're flipping burgers at McDonald's. You got an income now. You're paying your bills now. Maybe you're living in mom's basement. At the end of your day flipping burgers, go compete for another job by putting your resume in everywhere and just continue to competitively put your resume in everywhere and you'll kind of work your way up maybe to $20 an hour, $25 an hour doing some more sophisticated kind of work, right? At that point, if you do that for four years and you save everything you can, you just save all your money, don't get an apartment, live with your boyfriend, live with your parents, by the end of four years, you might have $40,000, $50,000 in your bank account. And you just put that down and buy a house right away. And, and that's also a really important tip. you got to buy a home early in life because you don't want to be wasting your income, your seed money, your early money on an apartment. It's such a waste. It's so wasteful to have to do something like that, to rent something when really you should be owning it and putting equity into it. And there's always some person who tries to contradict that statement. They say, oh, well... Owning a home isn't always a good idea. Yeah, well, you saw the explosion in house prices, but actually there is some sort of calculation, and the, the calculation typically says if you're going to live in a house for like three years, it is a good idea. And uh, so, yeah, you know, pick a house, strategize where you think a house is, you know. When I went shopping for a house, what me and my wife did, we sat down and we asked ourselves, which houses do we think are going to appreciate the most over time? We didn't ask which house looks the prettiest, which one is the easiest to move into. We didn't ask anything about which one has the best school, though that actually plays a pretty significant role because parents look at that. Uh, we asked a simple question, which house is going to appreciate the most in value? And we moved straight over to something like that. So we wouldn't have moved out here to Lake of the Ozarks if we didn't think that the value properties over here were, were going to rise. So anyways, so I was, I was addressing the ladies who might be watching. I was saying, don't waste your money on all this stuff. And uh, don't pick a husband who got a history degree and now he's just sitting on $70,000 of debt because he's going to become a media, uh, middle manager. And I'm not trying to beat up on history majors. There's probably a history major watching who's like, er, you know, and he wants to get into academia. But let's be real. It's, it's the same with like somebody who's saying, I'm going to become a rap artist. I'm not trying to ruin your dreams, but don't quit your day job, you know, because if it doesn't work out, because it's something like some small 1% or less of people actually become successful musicians. Um, you know, don't quit your day job. Have a backup plan. So don't marry into debt was that tip. Don't marry into debt. If you're a guy and you've got a useless English language degree and then you're marrying a girl with a useless degree in philosophy and then you guys are having a $10,000 wedding with the dress and the ring, you're screwed. You're done. You're just, you're going to be stuck now. And the price of house, uh, housing is going up. Our government's kind of selling our country out a little bit. I have a lot of, I have a lot of thoughts on that on that subject. Well, essentially what happens when the government, when we import a lot of goods from other countries, but we don't export goods from countries, what we do is we give them our money and then they come back in. They buy stuff from us, not goods. They buy our stuff, our homes and our land and our businesses. So they end up owning assets and we end up owning 
Nike shoes or something like that. You know what I mean? Although the Nike shoes guys will be like, hey, those are collectibles. All right. Don't marry debt. Don't waste your early money. This is another one. Don't have kids yet. <laughs> this is actually, you know, this shouldn't have even made the list because I think a lot of people already know this. I think a lot of people are choosing not to have kids at a young age. And I, I do want to mention that I think kids are very important. So if you're going to build wealth and you're going to become wealthy, what's the point if you're just going to die and it's just going to all go to the government? It's sort of like just eating candy your whole life. You've got, you've made your life very, you know, candy is not a good example, but you know, you've made your life very uh, leisurely and pleasurable and you don't have anyone to hand it off to. It's sort of, it's a little bit nihilistic or something to not have children in my opinion. So you should plan on having children because what else is there to do in life? But don't have them too young. I suppose I shouldn't have to tell anyone that though again. Um, if you're going to have kids, make sure you're married already. By the way, I, I also do believe you should be married. There's a lot of guys like the MG Tau guys and a lot of, uh, I guess you would call them the incel group or whatever. And I think there's incel groups on the other side too, by the way. I think there's, they call them like femcells or something, the ladies, and they're, they hate men. And the men go, er, we hate women. I'm not down with that. I think that it's, it's still very important to get into a happy relationship, a happy, healthy relationship. It's just more challenging to do that. So be sure to get yourself out there and meet as many people as you can. Not just women, meet a lot of guys too. If you're trying to marry a woman, uh, if you're trying to get a wife and you're a dude, you need to know a lot of other dudes because they introduce you to women, okay? So put yourself out there and, and do get married because not, not only is it good for your health, and that's proven by the science, not only is it good for your health and your health is part of your wealth, uh, but it's also giving you a tax break. You get a tax break for being married. I mean, if you weren't going to marry a lady, go marry a guy. <laughs> because uh, you need that tax break and then skip having kids when you're younger. Uh, this isn't as close of an option for women, I think. I think for women, uh, your your best years to have a child is when you're younger. But what you can do if you're a lady, you could marry a man who's maybe a little older than you, maybe like six to 10 years older than you, and he'll have more of a career already set up. And, and you know, and then you can pick a guy who's a little more established. But again, that's another thing that I don't really feel like I have to tell anyone because I think that's what already people are doing, right? But if you marry young and you marry, uh, you know, a guy who's young and his he doesn't seem to have the potentiality for wealth, he's got addictions, he does, he's not very smart with money, he doesn't have a goal, he doesn't have a plan, doesn't have that spark, you know, the SpongeBob spark that I keep referring to. Uh, you marry him and you have kids right away and he's got a degree in English and you've got a degree in history, now you're poor. All right, and my last tip was buy a home early, which I think I already spoke about. So buying a home early... Yeah, we went over that. Let me let me see if there's any other tips I can think off the top of my head. This is practically practical advice for young people. I feel like out of everything I talked about, the two most important ones were actually the attitude. Having the right attitude takes you. It's like that's the requirement for all the other steps. You know, think of it like getting into shape, getting healthy. Um, you can know that you're supposed to eat, I don't know, like healthy chicken, healthy beef with eggs and broccoli. You can know that stuff. You can know you're not supposed to drink soda and eat candy, but if you have the wrong attitude, you're never going to do it. So really figuring out how to unlock the correct attitude, I think, is uh, the psychological aspect of it is probably the more important side of it. And I know for me, it's, it's I had to spend time really thinking about things I want in life, financial freedom, the ability to live where I want to live. You have to be... Um, uh, you know, you have to have a, a, a taste for life. You have to have things in your life that you want to try. You want to go and live in another country abroad for a little while? You're going to need money for that. So go get to work. Uh, you want to you want to own a fancy Pokemon card like this, right? That's a whole taste for life thing. You you got you to gotta have some motivation to be wealthy. And, and some people lack that. And I, I think that's okay. Um, I, I have no problem with people who want to have a very simple lifestyle where they clock in and they don't earn very much money. I just don't want to, I just don't want to hear it later if they're like, well, I'm going to need some of your money now because you, you chose a different lifestyle than me and I didn't really want to work as much and, and, uh, now I would like for you to go ahead and, and actually I'm okay with, uh, helping people out and paying my fair share of taxes is sort of just talking. We're just talking now. I'm okay with all that. I do have a condition though maybe two conditions. I want to know that you love the country the way I love the country. I want to know that 
you're you're for this country and we're in it together. You know what I mean? I don't want to I don't want to live in a country where uh, you have people of mixed uh, beliefs about life, how hard you should work, and all that stuff. And so you've got this. You've got this undercurrent of people saying, hey, we have to have socialism, but also I kind of hate this country. I don't want that. The other thing is I don't want you to dislike me. You know what I mean? So if somebody comes up to me and they're like, hey, I'm really struggling. I need help with, with my kids. You're going to have to pay for my kids now. You're going to have to pay for my health care too. If they're going to say all that, but also, by the way, I don't like you. You know what I mean? Uh, that's that's really where <laughs> it doesn't work out so much. So um, so, you know, if you're, if you're watching this and you're collecting Pokemon cards and you're just looking to make more money and, and learn about wealth development, you didn't like many of the things I said. Some people don't like the stuff I say. Uh, you know, that's just why I would say, well, at least let's get along, right? Let's at least agree that we're living in a country together and we like each other. All right. Practical advice. Practical advice. I think I listed a lot of the stuff that helped me reach this point in life. Uh, I also want to put an emphasis on starting a business. I think that it's very sort of scary to start a business. I think there's this sort of psychological jump uh, where you, you imagine yourself as an employee. That's the safe route. That's the easy route. That's the guaranteed income route. And when you think of starting a business, you're like, I don't know what to do. You know, you, you almost can't fathom the idea of starting a business. And that's because you actually have to just get up and start doing things related to starting a business. Excuse me. So when I wanted to, sh to start a YouTube channel, I didn't sit on my butt imagining starting a business. Uh, I'm sorry, a YouTube channel. I went and I started making videos. You got to do something. You got to take action on it and not just have it floating around in your mind. Likewise, when I started getting into the cards, one day I just woke up and I bought a table and I bought a lamp and I bought cards and I bought a camera and I bought the camera stand and I, I started the YouTube channel. I generated the name. I created the icon. Uh, I, t I alerted my other followers on the game Economist about it. So I was doing a bunch of stuff. So put a lot of focus. You can think about things. You can strategize about things. You can hope actually do stuff. You know what I mean? So like wake up and write that resume out. Wake up and get your stuff done, you know? So don't be trapped in that sort of, uh, I, I don't know if I talked about this already, but the passivity. And passivity is like a drug-like state. In fact, I think... When you're addicted to something, and addiction's a big problem, it's a big modern problem. I think it's especially a modern problem for young people because of the addictiveness of video games, the addictiveness of cell phones and social media. Oops, hold on, we got a little battery. Still running? There we go. So, you know, addictive, addictive uh, you're surrounded by addictive products, your uh, sugar and all that stuff. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a victim <laughs> of, the, of, the, of the sugar. And uh, it's easy to become passive. And that's what we're looking for when we're getting high. We're, we're looking to just sort of relinquish control over our, our sort of like focused mind. We want to let go of our focused mind and just sort of float backwards into the, the uh, dopamine comfort of flashing uh, bright lights on our screen, right? So you have to avoid that passivity, you want to sort of have a, a firm line between when you're you're going to be passive and when you're going to be active. And the goal isn't to be active all the time, but the goal is to sort of, you know, very focusedly become wealthy, position yourself well, take care of your future self so that when you become older and all of your seed money that you use to build a big tree of wealth, all of your early actions lead to this point in life where now you're really you don't have any problems in life. You've got a nice home. You've got a nice income. You've got a direct path toward wealth and accomplishment. And now you can sit back with your friends and your family and uh, eat a cheesecake or whatever it is you guys are going to do. Use your own uh, <laughs> own imagination. Um, any other thoughts? I could talk about how I feel about the economy and about the government right now. You know, I feel like I feel like there's definitely got to be a lot of anxiety right now, especially with machines taking over a lot of jobs. You hear a lot of negativity coming out of the news. You hear a lot of negativity coming out of other young people. That's something I notice on like TikTok and YouTube, this excessive negativity. And I think that it's inaccurate. I think really what happens is like the algorithm, which sorts content and provides you content, it overwhelmingly favors negative content because the negative content gets the click. So uh, let's say you're writing two news articles. One news article says uh, life is good and 
everything is normal. Nobody clicks on that because that's just a normal state of being. But then you get another news article and it says, there's a tiger in the bushes and it's about to eat you and you're going to be poor and worthless in a minute. You click on that because that's just how the, you know, it's just uh, it's, it's part of your brain. That's how your brain works. It's nat natural. So the algorithm favors the negativity, but the reality is there's an enormous demand for work and innovation right now. And there probably always will be until we have maybe like AI, which, you know, if you're passionate about AI, go learn some technology. Uh, there is a tremendous and endless need for innovative and hard workers and so much money left to make. If you can imagine that there are still things in life that you want, well, those things haven't been made yet. And that means there is an enormous amount of wealth left to be created and made. So uh, I, I don't have laser beam eyes. Why not? Lightsabers, real lightsabers don't exist. Why not? I can't fly like a bird yet. Why not? I can't, um, you know, where are the sex robots, right? Like in the t TV shows, where's the uh, baby incubators for people who want to have a baby but don't want to actually get pregnant, you know what I mean? Where's the, um, where's the flying cars? Where's teleportation? Where's uh, a alchemist thing like in Star Trek where they can take any material and turn it into another material? Where's the cure for cancer? That's a pretty serious one. How do we replace our failing organs? Uh, there's just so much stuff to fix and to invent, and you don't even have to do that. You could just be somebody who invests in companies that are working on those things, or you could be somebody who uh, just trades the money being made by these companies while you work for them. There's just so much out there to do. There's all these countries, like I just watched a video on uh, Yemen, if I said that right, and they are one of the poorest Middle Eastern countries. They're starving, they're at war, the infrastructure down there is destroyed. But you know, that's an opportunity to build as well. So they've got a lot of negative things going on for them. And yet there's so much need for investment and for building and for infrastructure over there. That's work, that's productivity, uh, and this opportunity for growth, you know what I mean? I, I noticed they had a lot of beautiful beach property. And I'm thinking, how could a place be so beautiful with all these beautiful mountains and beach property and not be wealthy? But but that's the truth. And there's other countries like that. You know, there's countries that are poor, but they have gorgeous property that could be developed into nice places to live. But it's up to somebody to wake up and actually do that work to build the construction teams. Somebody needs to put a team of construction workers together to, to, to do that. Somebody has to build the buildings that you go into, and you take that for granted, you know. Uh, and the question is, if you don't do it, who's going to do it? You know what I mean? You take for granted a lot of the infrastructure that you live with in your first world society. But if all the guys who stood up and created all that died today, who would do it, you know? Uh, and it should be you. And the, the more important you make yourself to society in that way, the more you're going to earn. All right, so that's going to be the end of it. I don't think it's so negative for young people, but you have to have the right attitude. If you guys enjoyed this, let me know. I'll see you guys in the next video.